Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to complete Botany Manor with all the achievements on the PC version. I also include some details for additional achievements that you can get on Xbox. Let's get started. As we move into the game, you'll find yourself surrounded by mist. This is intentional, we remove this by growing our first plant, which we'll get to shortly. Note that you can hold down shift to move a little faster. Now that we're in game, move forwards, go look at the letter and pick up the book. The book acts as our quest log and is where we put all the clues for each of the plants in the game. Taking a look in the book, we can see sections of maps, plants and clues that will be filled in as we progress. Moving into the next room, we will get our first plant, which is the Windmill Wart. We get three clues to fill in for this plant. Let's take a look at it. Now head over to the potting bench. We'll pick up our first seeds, which will show up in the book, and we can read a guide to potting plants. Moving along the bench you'll come to a newspaper that you can read and a postcard. Postcard is our first clue that we can assign to the plant. It tells us that it lives in Sicily and that it has air purifying qualities. Continuing along, we come to a blackboard. The board has soil temperatures and a plant chart. We can tell from these clues that the wart is a volcanic plant and since it is from Sicily, it needs a temperature of 60 degrees C. Let's go back to the boiler where we can set the temperature to 60 degrees and then we can start to make the plant. Potting bench, take an empty pot, put some soil into the pot, put your seed into the soil, and then give it some water. Then we need to carry the pot over to the heat vent we saw earlier. And with the pot over at the heat vent, we can open that up and it will be the correct temperature for the plant to grow. As the plant grows, it will clear out the air. Each time you grow a plant, it will complete the plant's picture in the book. You'll need to fill in any clues that relate to that plant as well. In this case, I don't fill these in right now, I fill them in later. Okay, with that done, we can head out of the greenhouse into the garden and eventually the gatehouse where we can pick up the entrance garden key. With the key collected, you can turn round, go back up the path and open the garden entrance. In the garden, head over to the bench where we can sit down for the take a break achievement on PC. 
there's a further achievement on Xbox for sitting for over a minute on the bench. So stay on the bench if you want to unlock that. There is a letter next to the bench and there's nothing else we can do in the garden right now. So let's head on over to the house. Here in the window we can find the first duck, which is a white duck. If you pick that up and examine it, it will count towards an achievement. Over in the room to the left, we can find a letter and very little else. So have a quick read of that. And then as we head over back into the main building, we can start chapter two proper, which introduces two new plants into our book. Here we take a look at the family tree. The name Elizabeth Ann Hopgood, nay Green, becomes important later. You can also see a letter below the family tree from the genealogist. Moving across into the corner of the room, we can see a travel ticket. Then in the next room, we find three different photographs. You need to look at all of these. Then next to the photographs, pick up the packet of seeds. The seed will be added to your book, and since we have the book open, I choose this opportunity to fill in the clues for the chapter one, Wart Blank. Next travel back across the hallway where we can find a Dartmoor poster. Down the hallway we find a book about pyrophiles. We learn that some plants have tough seeds and only bloom surrounded by a particular smoke. Now turn around and head upstairs. You'll see a combination lock that we will come back to later. Open the next door, then head down the hallway and try to open the door next to the tree for an achievement if you've not already tried to open a locked door. Head all the way back downstairs, cross the hall and turn right to enter the dining room. At the back of the dining room, look at the folktale book where it explains that the Fulgaria only blooms during thunderstorms. Heading into the next room, on the desk we can see a photograph. Further into the room, collect the back terrace key. Over on the desk there's a letter to read. There's also an empty flash powder bottle. And on it we can see that the recipe is two potassium and one magnesium. Nearby, there's some camera gear, as well as a small table with some glasses and a manual for the flash camera. And with that, we have the clues that we need for the Fulgaria plant. Set them up in your book to look like this. We can also add a couple of ash plume clues in. Next, mix up the chemicals for the flash and load them into the compartment. It's two potassium and one magnesium. We'll use that later.
Here, you can also play the harpsichord for an achievement. Now we can head over and open up the back terrace. In the upper deck, there's a potting table and a book on flowering plants. Further down, we collect the ash bloom seeds and we can read a seed log that tells us that the ash bloom is found in Wisman's wood. In this next section, read the notes and collect the kitchen key before heading back to the house to unlock the kitchen. Once you're in the kitchen, on the kitchen table, check Hazel's priceless recipes. This book talks about cracking open hazelnuts, which is important for the tough nut that we have for the ash bloom. At the side, check the Dartmoor lecture note and the broken mortar. In this next room, there's a card and a framed poem that tells us that Wistman's Wood is populated by oak trees. Make sure to interact with the porcelain duck on the plate stand for the duck's achievement. Outside, in the next section, we find a book on smoking. This gives us all the clues we need for the ash bloom. Set them in the book to look like this. Next, I headed back out to the front of the house to plant up the Fulgaria. And that's the Fulgaria completed. Whilst we're here, we can tick off another achievement, Boom, which is to use a faulty mix of chemicals in the flash lamp. To do this, go back to the chemicals stand and combine any mix of chemicals. I use three here. Take that mix to the flash and then take another picture. That gets you the boom achievement, 
There's a further Xbox achievement here for taking a photo of a plant other than the Fulgaria. With that plant completed, we can move on to the Ash Plume. This is a two-stage growth where first we need to open the seed and then we need to grow the seedling. To open the seed, we need to pot the plant and then take it to the kitchen where the clues have suggested that we can heat the seed to crack it open. Next, we need to take the seedling outside to the smoking room, place it in there, and then put some oak wood on the smoker. This completes the Ash Bloom achievement. We'll need to go back to the gatehouse next. At the gatehouse, collect the orchard key, then go straight back down the path through the archway to the left of the house and unlock the orchard gate. In chapter 3 we have two plants to discover, Pixie Tears with five clues and Wolf Glove which has seven clues. Head to the bench, check the note and the nursery rhyme about the Wolf Glove which talks about wind. At this point, I add the Wolf Glove clue to my book. Go over to the little shed and pick up the Pixie Tears seeds. There are some pot notes about soil additives to read. Across the lawn, we find some microscope slides. Take a look at these, including the ones in the case. We'll find that Pixie Tears has no chloroplasts. This indicates that it will need soil additives to grow. Next to the slides, examine the tincture of iodine and the book on chloroplasts. Moving along, examine the orchard mosaic and the book A History of England which talks about priest holes and a letter from a historian which talks about finding hidden priest holes in the house. This will be important later on. Turning around, we can head through a doorway and find a copy of the Heritage Orchard on a table. Ahead, there's an area with a large number of apples and a note on apple blending which details sugar levels in apples. On the wall, we can see a chart showing the names of apple varieties. Further into the room, there's an apple press, with a pot holder below it showing where we can place a plant later. There's nothing more in this section for now, so turn around, head back out through the door, up the paved path, then turn left and go up the long path past the pagoda towards the tower. There's a letter from a builder on the table. Ahead and over to the left is the tower. Heading inside, we find a broken anemometer. If you like, take this opportunity to head to the top of the tower for an achievement. Either way, we'll be coming back here later. 
head out of the tower and up the stairs where we can see a chart showing wind levels related to which windows are open. We'll need to use this later. In combination with that, we have the Alpine Exploration Guide, with a list of wind speeds for various mountains. The key mountain here, which we'll discover later, is Mount Weishorn, with a wind speed of 40. From here, we can enter the top floor of the Orangery. We can't get downstairs yet, so instead head in and collect the painting room key. Next to the key, read the notes about the stairs. Around the corner, you'll find a letter from Natty, which mentions a whistling tune coming from a tiny flower. We can also find the envelope with stamp, showing a ram's head stamp. This matches the symbol on the coins. Head out of the double doors and back into the main house to unlock the painting room. In the painting room, we find the manor floor plan. The point to remember here is the construction date, 1593, or 1593. Across the room, there's a research team photograph and an invitation field trip note. Near the window, look at the flower painting book, a note about scales, which mentions how old the existing scales are, and a symbology book, which relates to a small symbol found near the scales. Also in this room, there is a botanical painting and a discarded poem. All of these clues should point us to the weighing scales that we saw earlier. So head back down the corridor to the kitchen, then take a left into the room with the scales. In the room, note the religious symbol on the shelves. For this puzzle, Pick up the weights 1, 5, 9 and 3 ounces and put them onto the scale in that order. The shelf will then swing open, giving us access to the priest hole. Head into the priest hole where there is a letter from a priest. You can now open the door into the orangery's lower floor. Before leaving the priest hole, pick up the tufted duck to count towards the achievement. Head into the orangery and collect the wolf glove seeds. There's two tables in this room that have souvenir coins in cases. Open both of those and take a look at all of the coins. The important coin in the case in the corner of the room is for Weishorn, showing the ram's head to link to the earlier clue. Also, check out the field trip journal, the Lady Mountaineer's picture, and the old advert. Next, go to the corner of the room and interact with the wooden planks to repair the stairs. We now have all the clues for the Wolf Glove and Pixie Tears plants. Arrange the Wolf Glove clues in your book to look like this.
and arrange the Pixie Tears clues in your book to look like this. Now, let's head over to the cider garden where we can plant the Pixie Tears. In the cider garden, we can prepare the apples we need on the press. We can see from the pot notes that the style of pot we use in the garden needs 97 grams of additive. So that's the amount of sugar that we need to press out of the apples. Looking at the apple blending chart, we can see that a knobby russet, 40, plus a cat's head, 30, and a Merlin Smith, 27, make up 97 grams. So we gather those together and put them on the press. There are a few different combinations that you can use here, so long as you end up with 97 grams of sugar from your apples. With that set up, we can go over to the potting bench to pot up the pixie tears, which we'll then need to bring back here to the press. Head over to the potting bench, plant up a pixie tears seed in some soil and give it a water. Then bring the plant back over to the apple press. Place it on the pot tray in front of the press and then turn the press to juice the apples. This will grow the pixie tears plant and complete the Pixie Tears achievement. Next up we have the Wolf Glove plant, which we need to grow with the help of wind in the tower. Head over to the potting bench near the tower where we can plant the seed. The Tower Wind Research Book across from the potting bench shows the window pattern needed to achieve 40 feet per second wind on the fourth floor. Going from the bottom, this is half open, closed, fully open, fully open and closed. I'll leave this on the screen so you can see whilst climbing the tower. Visiting the top floor of the tower also pops the Mountaineer achievement if you didn't do that already. Once all the window shutters are in the correct positions, go to the fourth floor with the plant to complete the Wolf Glove achievement. Then it's back to the gatehouse to read a letter from Sister, which tells us that the library lock is set to Elizabeth's initials. Using the family tree that we saw earlier, we can find Elizabeth Ann, and we know that she married a Hopgood, so the library lock code is E-A-H. Head back over to the house to open up the library. At the library, set the code E-A-H to open the lock and then enter the library hall. In the hall, there's a thank you card to look at. Ignoring the study for now, enter the next room to start chapter four and unlock four new plants. Taking a look in the book at our new plants, 
we've got Nightfall with eight clues, Sapphire Gloom with two clues, Cradle Fern with five clues, and Brook Chalice with six. You'll see a shelf ahead that has a number of buttons that you can press that correspond to times of the day. We need to go around the library and look at which icon represents what time of day and then press them in order of earliest to latest. So, go around the library to locate five books. These are The Fox and the Crow, The Golden Fish, The Hare and the Tortoise, The Rising Sun, and Wonders of the Night Sky. Each book represents a time of day, so you need to enter the code in the order Rising Sun, the sunrise picture, The Golden Fish, the fish picture, the hare and the tortoise, the hare picture, the fox and the crow, the bird picture, and the wonders of the night sky, the moon picture. As you go around the room, you'll come across a ball invite and a modern methods of teaching book. The area the books are in may be randomized. Once you've seen all of these and returned to press the symbols, the shelf will slide open giving you an achievement and opening the next area. In this area, there's a lumber of ball hangings showing sunset colours at different times of the year. We'll use the colours later. September 12th is the key arrangement of blue, yellow, orange and red. Read Grandma's research, which links the colours to the nightfall plant. Collect the study key. Pick up the bag of nightfall seeds and read the old newspaper. Then, leave the library and go over to the study. In the study, pick up the letter from Anne and the Meadow Orchids of Britain book. On the desk, check out Mushroom Food Sources and the Professor's Note. In the corner of the room are the Sapphire Gloom Seeds and a book on tree diseases. Next to the book is a display of eggs that can be examined. The pattern on the crested owl egg is interesting. Head out of the room, downstairs and outside to plant the sapphire gloom seed. Then, bring the plant inside and place it next to the large tree. This infects the tree with fungi and moves it out of the way of the door upstairs. Add the mushroom book and the tree diseases clues to the sapphire gloom to complete the plant. Now head upstairs through the newly opened door. This next section opens up a large number of rooms. Entering the new area, look at the trapped fairy painting on the wall, noting its colours. Near the seat, there's a letter about weeds that talks about brook chalice blooming in river water in Somerset.
you can't open the attic just yet. So continue down the hallway, checking a cradle fern painting, where you can see the eggs we noticed earlier. Continue up the corridor, entering a bedroom on the right. There's a weed removal ad in the bin, mentioning Brooke Chalice. On the desk, there's a petition and some cradle fern seeds. Check the trapped fairy story on the table and a picture of Nova the cat in the window. On the dressing table, read the letter from Eliza. Next to the bed, find a tincture of red clover and essence of arnica flower. Open the door to head into the bathroom. Here, check the quote on the table before taking the pipe pieces and fixing them in place. You can refer to the completed image on the screen for help. There's also a bath geezer leaflet talking about hot water. With the puzzle complete, flush the toilet for another achievement. We'll come back to the bathroom later. Head out of the bedroom and open the door across the hall. In the room, read the letter on the trunk. Over on the notice board, check the health and safety warning, which mentions rust polluted rivers and notes how the frome is free from rust now. Next to that is a Somerset River trust note about the Cam, Chu and Soma rivers having been cleared of weeds. Pick up the attic key. In the next room, a letter about melodies talks about plant sensitivity to sound. We can also see a chart with river temperatures and the temperature to note is the river froms 25 degrees. Take a quick look upstairs at the bells and the bird calls book that we'll use later. Head down and all the way to the other end of the hall to open up the attic. Enter the attic and check the flower growing companion poster. On the moth spotting calendar, we can identify September as the month for the garden tiger. There's a moth's poster to check the patterns of moths on. The garden tiger shares its markings with the trapped fairy we saw earlier. Head upstairs where there's a rusty pig next to the site of plants. Head past a projector and slides that we'll use later. Look at the dinner invitation on some luggage. Here, behind a clock, is the mallard duck that you need to pick up for the duck's achievement. 
This should be your last duck. It may pop for you here, though I had to come back and re-examine this duck later on. Look at the botanist's digest on the table opposite, then pick up the brook chalice seeds. At this point, we have all the clues for this chapter. Arrange your nightfall clues to look like this. Set your cradle fern clues like this. And your brook chalice clues like this. Next, we'll plant up the brook chalice. I start this at the bench at the front of the house. To grow this plant, you need to put it in the bath, set the temperature on the water heater to 25 degrees, and add rust in the form of the rusty pig from the attic. At this point, I'll mention that there's an achievement for throwing a plant in the bin. That's a pre-C achievement. There's also an achievement on Xbox for growing the same plant three times. I won't show this in the video. Just take a moment to do whatever you need to do. Next, head to another potting bench to plant the nightfall. Take the nightfall seedling up to the projector in the attic. Put the blue, yellow, orange and red slides into the projector to match the September sunset colours. Then start the projector to bloom the plant. Finally, for chapter 4, we grow the Cradle Fern, which needs a specific sequence of notes based on our song. Pot the plant at the bench near the small attic, then take it up to the bells and play the notes E, C, D, E, G, F to bloom the plant. That completes chapter 4, so head over to the gatehouse to pick up the formal garden key where we'll head for the start of chapter 5. Read the apology from Jimmy and then head over to the garden.
Entering the formal garden unlocks our final set of plants. Spring down shrub with seven clues, fool's emerald with six clues, and ocelet with four clues. Let's continue. Over on the picnic bench, there's a newspaper article to read about some Morse code, which mentions the word attention. Head to the pagoda to collect the spring dance shrub seeds. Turn around and head through a flower arch to a table where there's a book on military codes. Note that attention is K-A in code. Read the note about the lawn. Near the wall, there's some plant additives like seaweed. We'll use these later. In the shed, you'll find growing hydrangeas and an assortment of pots next to a pot chart. In the video, I only check one side of it at this time, but it is double-sided, as we'll see later on. Head out, looking at the telegraph note on the way. Head up the stairs. Notice the robin fly away as you get closer to him. We'll catch up with him later. Continue into the garden where we find a pH chart on a table. Red requires a pH between 12 to 14. Examine the soil research to see that you need sandstone and seaweed together to make a pH in that range. Carry on into the garden and eventually reach a covered area where there's a boathouse key to pick up. Check the poster about pollinating birds. Turn around and head forwards to find a can of bird seed. Next to it is another bird feeder that we'll use later. Head over to a bench where there's a letter from Hazel. Continue forwards for a letter about mentoring. Then take a right from the path and head all the way down to the boathouse area. There's a spiritualism book to read on the way. Next to the book is a handle on the floor near the mower. Pick it up and head all the way back to the empty pond we passed earlier. Here, attach the handle to fill the pond with water and collect the Frogger achievement. Cross the lilies now if you like to take a look at the cave. We'll come back here later.
head up the big stone stairway to find a greeting card. Here we can find the Fool's Emerald Seeds next to a book on bioluminescence. On the chalkboard, there's a plant chemicals note. From here, head back down the stairs and follow the path around down to the boathouse. To the right of the boathouse, you can find a telegraph. Take a look inside the telegraph case. There's an achievement to tap out SOS on the telegraph, which is dot 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 dash 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 dot dot dot. Leaving the telegraph for now, head up the stairs and in the doorway to the boathouse proper. In here, we'll find a book on how weeds spread. Take a while to look at the game cards and the rules on the table. The red squirrel is the only field card in the deck. To the side, look at the supplies invoice. Across the room, there's some phonograph recordings and a book of animal heartbeats that indicates that the BPM, the red squirrel at rest, is 120. We'll need to match this to a song tube that plays at 120 BPM. Collect the oscillate seeds from the window. The four boathouse clues are what we need for the ocelot, so put them in your book now. Looking at the song tubes, we can see that Meadows Bliss plays at 120 BPM. Pop that one in the phonograph. Now head outside and down the stairs to the potting table where we will plant up the ocelot. Take your plant back upstairs and put it next to the phonograph. Turn the phonograph on to grow the oscillant plant. Now head out of the boathouse, down the stairs, and collect the telegraph. Carry the telegraph all the way back to the cave we revealed the path to earlier. You can open up a shortcut on the way.
Next, we're going to complete the Fool's Emerald. Set clues for your Fool's Emerald to look like this. Head out of the cave to the potting bench to plant those emeralds, and then bring the plant back to the cave. Trigger the plant to bloom, we need to type the Morse code for KA into the telegraph, which is dash dot, dash dot, dot dash. This completes the blooming of the Fool's Emerald, which is a pretty impressive looking plant. Next up, follow the path to find the final duck in the achievement collection. This is the Egyptian goose, found on a crate near the boathouse. Here's a quick duck recap montage. If the achievement doesn't pop, visit the ducks and make sure you pick them all up again. Finally, let's put together the clues for the Spring Dance Shrub, which is the final plant in the collection, completing the clues achievement. This is a tricky plant to bloom, as we need a few things. First, a sandstone pot from the shed. Then, some seaweed additive. Of course, we need soil in the pot first, so head over to a potting bench. With the soil in the pot, head back and add the seaweed additive. Now go back to the potting bench, add the seed, and give it some water. A red seedling should be sprouting. Finally, we have to use two bird feeders to lure the robin from its perch to the covered area where we can have it rest next to the plant to pollinate it. The second bird feeder is located next to the bird seed we saw earlier in the video. Grab that and get things set up as I'm showing here, and then follow along with the video to lure the bird. I'll leave this section at normal speed so you can follow it easily. This all has to be done without getting too close to the robin as that scares it away.
And that is the final plan. All that remains is to head over to the gatehouse one last time to post the book. I hope that this has helped you to 100% complete Botany Manor. This was a mammoth edit, so if it has helped, you know what to do, leave a like and subscribe. As I was finishing this video, I noticed that the additional Xbox achievements made their way into the PC version. If there's demand, I'll produce a recap on how to get these extra achievements. Most I have mentioned already, if not directly shown. The ones I haven't mentioned are flower arrangement. Place a plant on every saucer in the flower room. This is the little room next to the main house, and it has 12 spaces for plants. So you'll need to grow 12 different plants. Actually, no, you need to grow 12 plants, of which I think six have to be unique. So good luck with that. The other that I've not mentioned directly is to look at all the paintings, but I do believe we do that as part of the game anyway. Either way, that's all I've got to be today. See you next time. Thank you.